Just a little over a week ago, we kicked off Expedition 43, and uh, Commander Terry Vertz and his crewmates will be staying at the International Space Station until May to finish that up. And, of course, they'll be joined soon by crew members who will be staying a full year, uh, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, as well as their Expedition 43 crewmate, Gennady Padaka. With uh, the crew staying a year, we have some interesting opportunities as far as science goes. And here to tell us a little bit more about that today is the Expedition 43 and 44 lead increment scientist, Jorge Stadomayor. Thanks so much for joining us, Jorge. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Brandy. It's my pleasure. Uh, yes, yeah, we're really excited about this mission. It's going to be uh, very interesting, for sure. Well, is is it very different having uh, crew members that will stay a full year? Does that does that change things for you? How do you tell people about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a very uh, big difference uh, compared to the previous increments where we only had the crew members for about four to six months. In this particular case, we're going to uh, take advantage of having Kelly and Konienko there for a year. So we have a suite of experiments, uh, new investigations planned to address how the human body reacts to extended periods of microgravity. So it's going to be very, very interesting. I think you were telling me that you've got uh, more than 270 experiments and all that are going to be going on during the time, uh, Expedition 43 and 44. So that's a lot to, to keep up with. Yes, we're going to be very busy. Yeah, actually, I think this is going to be one of the busiest uh, increments uh, that we've had ever. So, um, and we are actually it demonstrates the teamwork uh, with all the international partners because uh, we have over, two, like you mentioned, over 270 experiments, uh, including the international partners in Russia, and uh, we have to work together in trying to make everything work. And that's um, you know the experience experiments that we see the crew members just helping the scientists on the ground with, as well as the ones that you mentioned that look at the effects of spaceflight on the crew members themselves, right? Mm, yes, correct. Okay, so um, I, you know, as in addition to um, those, you, are you going to be looking at the the psychological effects of, of being away from the Earth so long? Uh, yes, we have uh, several experiments that look at the habitability uh, of the crew members uh, living in space. Okay. Um, also, how their uh, cognition varies with their longer exposure in space as well as their reaction um, when after losing some sleep and being under uh, difficult, stressful situations, especially for one year period. So how do you study that? It seems like it's a little bit, uh, it's not easily quantifiable, I guess. That's correct, yes. It's very hard. It's very hard. And uh, in terms of learning how the crew feels, uh, there's an investigation called journals where the crew members will write down uh, on a regular basis whatever they want to talk about, yeah, how they feel, how is their interaction with the ground, interaction with other crew members, so the uh, researchers on the ground can uh, better understand how the crew member is feeling. There's a Cogni uh, cognition, this uh, Russian investigation, that will also try to objectively identify the interactions between the on-orbit crew and the ground and the frequency, and, and based on that, try to assess a psychological and physiological state of mind, uh, uh, health okay. for the crew member. Um, I know the journals experiment, that one's been going on for a while, and we've done it with all the crew members who have just been there for six months. Is the cognition experiment, you mentioned that was a Russian one. Have we participated in it before? No, this is the first time. This okay. is the first time for us. Mm -hmm. So that should be uh, interesting new data for us. Oh, definitely, yes. Especially it shows also, again, the collaboration between the uh, uh, with the United States, with NASA, and the, the Russian uh, space agency. Are there a number of uh, experiments that we're working on with the Russians? Yes, there are several. Uh, another uh, very interesting experiment uh, with uh, uh, is, is called OASIS, and it studies uh, uh, in microgravity. It's going to be sort of like a bubble, and and the effects of a uh, crystal growth on this bubble, uh, solid state. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting uh, experiment as well. And we have a Russian collaboration in a another experiment called fluid shifts, that also uh, studies how the fluids in the body move from the lower body to the upper body and how that affects the uh, intracranial pressure and the, uh, the, the vision, actually, of right. the crew members. So that's also coming up uh, very soon. Mm -hmm. And that would be the first time. Okay. We'll hear a lot about that. I guess, um, has, has the, the partnership that came, apart, came about as part of the having the one-year crew go up together, has that increased the number of experiments we're working on with the Russians? or? Uh, yes, yes, it has. Yes, it, it, it's increased. We have several in the uh, human research uh, area, as well as the uh, um, uh, in in the combustion uh, experiment uh, uh, com 
as, as well. Um, and um, and also we're going to uh, have some support from the Russian crew members in the uh, Rodent Research 2 experiment that's coming up on SpaceX 6. And that's unusual, right? Usually the U.S. side of the station works on the U.S. and the international partner projects, and then the Russian side of the station Russia works on the Russian experiments, mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so this is, again, we're breaking new ground. Uh, and we started a couple of increments ago, but now we continue to increase the collaboration with the Russian uh, segment of the Russian Space Agency uh, more and more. And I guess that's nice because you get the extra data and also the extra hands to help with the science on orbit. Uh, yes, definitely. And especially with an investigation like uh, Rodin Research 2, which is very crew time intense, uh, it, it, we need uh, uh, that additional uh, help, yeah, crew time intensive. So, yeah, it's, it's really good to have that help. Okay, does that need more help because of just the taking care of the, the rodents in space, or? Uh, it, it includes uh, the taking care of the rodents uh, as well as uh, performing uh, the actual, uh, the investigation and the dissections that are going to take place on orbit. And those are require a lot of crew time uh, over uh, consecutive days. Yeah, sure. So so we want to have, uh, it'll be good to have the Russian uh, um, crew time uh, helping uh, the, the Russian crew members. Well, any other experiments that you'd want uh, to highlight or mention? Uh, there's a really cool experiment uh, going up. Actually, it's the the second part of uh, the robotic refueling mission. Uh, that's RRM Phase Two, sure. and uh, we should be doing that uh, within the next couple of weeks. And uh, actually, uh, it attempts to refuel satellites on orbit. Uh, and these are, you know, more uh, previous generation kind of satellites that w they have a limited life. So um, we would hope to extend the life of these satellites so that we can continue reusing them and save uh, companies on the ground having to the expen expense of having to launch brand new satellites. Well, that sounds like something we should definitely work watch out for, you said, starting in just a, a few weeks even. so. Uh, yes, correct. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye out for that, and thank you so much for coming and talking with us. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Again, this was Jorge Sotomayor, who is the lead uh, increment scientist for Expeditions 43 and 44 on the space station. Thanks so much.